What is there we can really do which we're not thinking and not doing enough of? I, I really want to echo the comments about the full stack approach. Um, India is an incredibly important market for AI in general, for OpenAI in particular. It's our second biggest market, tripled users here in the last year. Um, but mostly seeing what people in India are building with AI at all levels of the stack, chips, models, uh, you know, all of the incredible applications. So I think India should be doing everything. I think India should be one of the leaders of the AI revolution. That it's a, it, it's really quite amazing to see what the country has done and embraced the technology and building uh, again the, the entire stack of things on top of it. And also with the you know recent uh, developments, uh, you know, do you have a different view around the cost of building foundational models? <laughs> yeah. Um, so. First off, that's a, if that's a reference to a comment I made here a few years ago about the cost, uh, I think that was taken out of context. Um, that was a very specific time when there was a certain scaling thing where I thought, you know, it's going to, and I still think to stay on that frontier of pre trained models is expensive. But one of the most exciting things that's happened to me since, that I think has happened in the industry since, is we're now in a world where um, we made incredible progress with distillation. We learned a lot to do small models, and these reasoning models in particular can be, it's not cheap, it's still expensive to train them, but it's doable. Uh, and I think that's gonna lead to an explosion of really great creativity, and you, you know, India should be a, a leader there, of course. Um, there's, there's two sort of different ways you can look at the costs of models. So to stay at the frontier, um, we believe those costs will continue to rise on this exponential curve, but also the returns to increasing intelligence are exponential in terms of the economic value, the scientific value that you can create. Um, so, you know, we're doing this big Stargate project and that's gonna go like this. On the other side of it, um, the, the cost for a given unit of intelligence one year later seems to fall by about 10x. Moore's Law was a 2x every 18 months for the number of transitions on a chip, and that changed the world if you waited a few decades. But what's happening with the reduction in cost in AI models is, is extraordinary. Now, I don't think it means that the world's gonna need any less AI hardware because you bring the cost down and just the people are gonna use it for a lot more things. The total number of dollars will go up. But, uh, you know, it, that's, a, that's a really exciting thing happening. That's that's uh, wonderful to hear, and I think there's a lot of excitement here, which is why you know. So I'd like to come to you. You know, we you recently announced that India should be building foundational models, and you know it's a very complex process. And I was just wondering, you know, how are you thinking about you know the, the surprises and the serendipity that's going to come from a lot of the uh, diversity that we have here and the complexity of just India. And so you know, how do you feel that the f the foundational models that we are that India is planning to build uh, is going to be unique and serve a unique purpose? Uh, to the world? Listen, lots of innovation is happening. As Sam said, every year it's a 10x uh, reduction in the cost of intelligence. That kind of innovation can, can come from anywhere in the world. Why shouldn't it come from India? That's the point. Sure. And our uh, young entrepreneurs, our startups, our researchers, they are really, really focused on getting that next level of innovation, which will reduce the cost. See, we, we our country sent a mission to the moon at a fraction of the cost that many other countries did, right? Why can't we do a model which will be a fraction of the, which will be a fraction of the cost that many other countries do? So yes, innovation will bring that cost down. We think that that kind of thing will come out in this process. Absolutely, and you know, just the diversity that we have here. I think you know, at OpenAI, often we see that you know, if you can solve uh, for India, often you can solve you know for the world as well. Because if you're able to take care of the 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 breadth that we have and be able to solve for the last mile, uh, often you can you know very much do that. And you know, also you've spoken extensively about the you know the excitement that you have around building on application layers. And you know, and since we have developers and startups in the room, I think this could be a great uh, space or a great platform for you to share. What do you really think are you know areas that they should really be thinking about, and also not only supporting on the application layer, but also your adoption just within the government? How are you really looking at that AI adoption within the government? That's a good question. We have been uh, using multiple AI applications within large, I mean, uh, so many different departments, so many wings of the government, um, and uh, I think that that can really help us solve these population scale problems. Because most of the problems we face, Sam, are problems where you have to look at a multiple of billion 
so which is like very common so then how do we solve these population scale problems that's where our focus of course is on all the three layers and within the applications in healthcare in education in agriculture in weather forecasting in disaster management in transportation multiple different things we are working and the i uh, request the entire startup community to come up with uh, very unique solutions and uh, we'll be open we are very soon starting a kind of open competition for it open empanelment competition kind of thing so that will be huge so many problems can be solved and why don't we use this latest technology that we have for solving these problems right you guys are good with that or love to love to do so more so. energy guys come on <laughs> Amazing. Um, you know, just building on that, uh, uh, you know, Sam, I'd like to come to you talking about population scale problems, as the minister said, you know, again, India is very placed for very well placed for that. And, and our mission really is, you know, artificial general intelligence for all of humanity. And so I'm really curious to understand from you, how can the models and the tools that we are constantly releasing play that equalizer role and be able to really fulfill in healthcare, education at, you know, really significant ways? You know, finally, for the first time, I think the models that are on the near-term horizon, um, the models that we'll release in the coming months, are over the threshold of being good enough to really address these problems. And now people just have to go build the solutions. So you already see, and you see this actually a lot with deep research in the last couple of days. People say it did this amazing thing for diagnosing a disease or helping me with my research to you know, try to cure a disease. Um, Education, you've already seen now with previous models where people said that the amazing uh, tutoring results. So I think the underlying in a technology is just right on the threshold, and we'll get there with the next models. But now people have got to go off and build all these services. So someone in this room hopefully will figure out what the AI tutor of the future looks like, and you know that'll be a population scale thing, and it'll think what that would do if every kid on Earth you know, this year got, uh, got an AI tutor that was provided like a better education or helped to provide a better education than anybody could get last year. Um, think what it would mean if we could have like an AI medical diagnosis system that was better than anyone could get last year. Um, think what it could mean if scientists could go cure every disease faster. And so, you know, we've been waiting for this moment for a long time. Um, I think we're gonna deliver something that can help with it and now people have to go, go build with it. Absolutely, and I think the recent uh, launch of uh, the research was just incredible, right? And I think everyone's been tracking it closely. We want to be able to use it. Do you have any advice specifically if we were to use that uh, to solve, you know, very complex problems like cancer and, and large diseases that we, that we suffer? Do you have any sort of guidance on what's the right way to start experimenting? So we're, we're very much still in the research assistant phase of this. Um, this can help someone... Uh, you know, review the existing literature and find some connections, but this is not an innovator yet. This is, I, I don't think we're yet at the technological level where any of us should expect these models to go cure cancer on their own. We will get there, I think. Yes. Um, but for now, uh, y you know, this can just, I think this can help people, help researchers say, be much more productive in what they do. Absolutely. Um, I also just want to ask you, you know, what would, India has an aspiration to have a voice and be in, you know, the top, uh, global countries contributing towards AI. What do you think, what is your advice, you know, as we think about and as we have so on stage, what do you think we should do uh, to really have that global voice that we want to be and leaders actually in India? I mean, it seems to me like it's working. Yeah. I'm not sure you need to do anything differently. <laughs> That's already a compliment to what, what uh, Sir is already doing and, and getting out. Um, I also want to ask you, sir, a quick question. I, you must be using AI in your daily life, and I'm not going to ask you what is your favorite platform because that we already know. Uh, <laughs> so, but I'd love, I'm very curious to know how is uh, OpenAI models adding efficiency and productivity to you in your daily life? Bad question to ask. <laughs> On this platform, obviously, I'll say it's very good. <laughs> no, of course, uh, jokes apart, OpenAI really makes life uh, significantly easier. Um, writing notes, getting all that stuff out, it becomes very easy and getting the... I was just curious, what would your research project mean for quite a lot of people and how can we make, the, make that transition smoother? How can we make more difference in their lives as we were discussing just before coming to this stage? As in the 
um, large number of people who do a little bit of basic research and bring out reports. So this is a very unscientific guess, but my, my vibes-based guess is that deep research can do a single digit percentage of all of the economically valuable tasks in the world and almost none of the complete jobs. Um, but that's okay because you can just use it to be more efficient. So if you are a scientist trying to cure some disease, deep research is surely not going to go cure that disease on its own. But if you can farm out um, the tasks that took you a lot of time but were lower value, you know, if you can say, help me with this literature review, help me figure out how to order these supplies, help me figure out what steps I need for this experiment, and you learn to work that way, maybe you can be twice as efficient. And if you can double the efficiency of every scientist on Earth with a tool we have today, which I believe might be possible. It's Again, it's not going to do the really brilliant insights, but if it can take away a lot of the lower level work, um, it's going to take the world a while to get used to that. I think you know people have compared the launch of deep research to the launch of ChatGPT, where so we had chatbots and now we go to these agents and you, it's like a magical thing. You're like, oh, I didn't think AI could go do this thing for me. I didn't think I could go do a multi-day task and now I can. Um, but it took a while for the world to figure out how to use ChatGPT. Not that long, like months, uh, not, not years. And I think it's going to take months, not years, to figure out how people become really productive with deep research. Yeah. Cyber security is another concern, and also there are concerns about national security. Sam, what do you think, how should we be working on these items? He's taking my job now. <laughs> um, I, I think these... Yeah, these models are on the precipice of being incredible at software engineering. And that'll be great for a lot of things. I think software engineering by the end of 2025 looks very different than software engineering at the beginning of 2025 does. But it will have huge impacts, good and bad, for cybersecurity. And we've got to get ahead on the good. For sure. No, sir, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that guy is saying time. So I just wanted to make the best use of every second that I have with you, Sam. And thanks a lot for coming to India. We are super excited that you have come here. And uh, really, this entire team, entire startup community is so excited, so supercharged. But guys, I cannot see that energy. <laughs> Show it, man. Come on. <laughs> That's the way. That's our India today, right? Thank you very much for having me today. And really excited to do a lot more together. Yeah, absolutely. Looking forward, sir. Thank you so much for uh, all the ideas. And I think this is the right room to start. And we have a lot to cover. So we are going to get on with it. And, and with OpenAI right there to support the developers, the ecosystem, the government, we'd love to do more together. And hopefully next year when Sam is here, uh, you know, we'll have uh, already many, many of these partnerships uh, in place. So looking forward.